All right, I'm a little late to the party here, but that's because uh, the new YouTube studio is still under the works, but WWDC 2021 from Apple is finally over, the week concluded. Um, overall, I thought the event was okay. It wasn't anything spectacular, but I wasn't disappointed. Uh, life lesson I learned is just, you know, lower your expectations so you aren't disappointed with everything that happens. Just kind of go with the flow. Anyway, getting off my soapbox here. Um, so no hardware was announced. Um, it seems that with the COVID cases dying down compared to six months ago or even a year ago, um, Apple's going back being super laser focused with WWDC being a software focused event for their upcoming releases later in the fall. Um, that's the event that most people care about, like the new iPhones, the iPads, the watches. Um, so this event was actually pretty big. I'll have a hands-on video using iOS 15 and comparing it to iOS 14. So subscribe if you wanna see that. So now let's kick off with iOS 15. Um, so we gotta shout out Craig. My boy Craig is back. He's dominating the event as usual. Mr. Senior Vice President of Software Engineering. So we get introduced to FaceTime and FaceTime is something that is probably something that becomes more natural the more you use it. Um, the biggest problem for me, at least when using iPhone, not iPhone, the biggest problem for me when using FaceTime is that my phone gets extremely hot after about 15 minutes, but this really isn't my complaints about FaceTime. We're here to talk about the improvements that they've made. So spatial audio has been implemented into FaceTime, and this is gonna be a reoccurring theme throughout this entire event. Now, if you've never experienced spatial audio, your first time, you're never gonna forget how amazing it sounds. Um, it's very hard to describe, but there's just more openness around you and the audio just sounds like it's literally all around you. But what does this exactly mean for FaceTime? Well, depending on where the person is on the call physically on the screen, it comes from that direction so it sounds more natural. At least that's the way Apple's putting it. So I'm thinking, how does this really matter on a one-on-one -on -one call? don't really know because that's primarily how I use FaceTime, but only time will tell. I'm guessing maybe the person can just float around. I don't know, I'm just thinking outside the box here. Anyway, the biggest confusion for me with this FaceTime update is at the footnotes, it says Apple is only going to support this for iPhones on the 10S or above, or MacBooks that were made in 2018 or above. So if this is true, which it most likely is, uh, it's a serious disappointment, but at least FaceTime itself will still work. Um, so there is voice isolation now, so all that crazy background noise that happens, pretty much people who use FaceTime publicly while shopping. Um, Apple will process out the background noise and remove it so you just hear the person's voice. Imagine just going from transparency mode to active noise canceling for your voice. So you go from hearing everything to just hearing what's important, which are the voices. So here is Apple's example of what they used. Let me fix this. Better, right? Yeah. Thought <laughs> she wanted for her birthday. <laughs> now I know this is marketing to showcase how Apple can use this technology, but with the leaf blower in the background, I do think that was a little bit extreme, but it's nice that it's able to cancel out you know, something as loud as that in the background. So you just hear a person's voice. Think that was pretty cool. Um, anyway, next up, FaceTime calls is getting, you know, a grid format now that comes with that spatial audio. Now, if you've worked in a corporate setting before and you've used software like Microsoft Teams, WebEx, Slack, you know that they've been doing this for many years now. Um, so basically FaceTime is now catching up and is now, I guess, a proper voice conferencing tool. I use the term proper loosely because it only caps out at 32 people and I've been in a couple meetings where there needs to be more than 32 people on the call. Um, so don't know how effective FaceTime is gonna be for that. Um, honestly, I'm spending way too much time talking about FaceTime like they did. So to speed things up, um, you get portrait mode while FaceTiming. FaceTime is now pretty much on every platform. So Android, Windows, you name it. Uh, so Android users are gonna have to bow down to your Apple friends because I know they're not going to leave FaceTime for Google Duo. Um, SharePlay seems to be built into FaceTime itself so you can share your music together, watch stuff together, share your screen, something that Discord has been doing for quite some time as well. Um, I pretty much wanna say like I miss those days of being on the phone with a friend and being like, all right, on three, we're gonna hit play. One, 
two, three. Oh wait, I messed up. Can we go back? We need to go back to zero, zero, zero and do it again. Anyway, enough about FaceTime. Overall, great improvements, but we need to move over to messages. So we get handed off to Mindy, who is an engineering PM. Um, so first we get an introduction of how photos are viewed in messages, which I personally love this new format. Um, so instead, <laughs> do not disturb. I'll talk about do not, do not disturb in a second, but instead of getting a wall of photos, it's just a stack that you can swipe through and interact with those tap back things. So you can do like the exclamation point, question mark, haha, ha, all the other stuff. Um, so now there's something else called share with you. Um, so essentially what this is, it's as if a person sends you something from a pre-existing first party Apple app, like Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, Apple News, there will be a shared with you section if someone sends you something and you can actually see, that sounds a little bit weird. You can actually see who sends it to you from that section. So the only way I can really describe this is think of it as an elevated version of when someone sends you a link and it says Siri suggestions. Now we go back to Craig who talks about notifications. The notification thing might seem subtle, but like again, trust me, you will never wanna go back to the way iOS 14 and below how notifications look. The, it just looks a lot more pleasing to the eye. It's a lot easier to identify what notifications are coming in. I don't know why it took Apple so long to update this. Um, but now the biggest announcement for me was the more advanced feature of Do Not Disturb and it's also called Focus Mode as well. So for one, if you enable Do Not Disturb now, when someone sends you a text, they get a notification saying that you're on Do Not Disturb. And as a person who uses Do Not Disturb a lot, this is seriously a godsend. Um, now, we wanna talk about, what's it called? Focus Mode. Now, these are basically different Do Not Disturb profiles that allow you to block certain notifications from apps, but not all the apps, and allows you to block certain notifications from people, but not all people. And it also lets you customize how your home screen looks. And Apple gave an example of using a work profile and a personal profile, um, but using the beta myself, you have the ability to create whatever profile you want. Um, I think this is amazing, but I just wish it wasn't wrapped up in the Do Not Disturb feature. There should just be a separate profile feature by itself. But the good news is it syncs across all your devices as well. So if you go into your work mode, it goes to your Mac, your, or, or I should say your MacBook goes into your work mode, your iPad goes into your work mode. Pretty much anything that's connected to your iCloud account goes into that focus mode. So that's just the beauty of the Apple ecosystem. Now, a, another nice feature Apple added was with the camera and the ability to capture handwriting and convert it into regular text. So let's say you're in class and you wanna copy someone's notes who still happens to write stuff down. All you have to do, snap a pic, select the text that you want, drag and drop it into Google Docs or the Notes app. Um, so this already works for photos that are already in your library. I think this is pretty cool. I've seen this type of technology before, but now that it's on the fly and for mass consumers, it's nice. Um, also, it's not just English, it converts or it covers six other languages. So I assume more to come down the pipeline. Um, something brief, there's something called visual lookup, which is basically Google Lens for Siri. Now we get sent over to Chelsea, who is the senior manager of photo engineering to talk about memories. Now, when I first saw this, I thought it was a gimmick. I truly did. Then I got the beta and tested it myself. And I gotta say that this is probably one of my top five features of iOS 15, even though the bar is already pretty low. <laughs> but now with iOS 15, basically what happens is when you go to the For You tab in the Photos app, um, where you have the memory gallery, seriously, <laughs> so many distractions in this video. Um, so traditionally what you would do is you would swipe through the photos of, swipe through the photos and videos at that point in time. Now with iOS 15, it auto generates this video with background music and filters. And depending on what you choose, it speeds up, it speeds up or slows down and also changes the transitions. Uh, like I said, I feel like people would think this is a gimmick just by looking at it, but similar to how Apple introduced live photos, I feel like this is something that people are going to remember and it's going to enhance their previous photos that they take. And it's just going to make their memories or their photos and videos at that point in time 
even more memorable, hence the name Memories. Um, also, side note, the music that plays in the background links to Apple Music, so if you don't already have a subscription to Apple Music, this basically entices you to get it. Marketing 101. Um, next up is Jennifer, Vice President of Wallet and Apple Pay. I don't know why I made that so dramatic, but Jennifer, to your department, I gotta salute you. Apple Pay, I love it. I know there's Google Pay, Samsung Pay, but Apple Pay, love it. Now, they talked about car keys last year, but pretty much if you don't own a 2022 BMW, you've probably never seen or heard this feature. So when it gets to cars that are affordable and they don't break right after the warranty expires, then car keys will be a reality to me. But so far, I have never seen or heard anyone use car keys yet. Um, so we also now have the ability to have our hotel cards within the Apple wallet, which is great. Um, they talked about a resort, but that resort is like $1,500 a night. So yeah, don't expect the Marriott, Hilton, Hyatt locations to have this, but when it does come around, this will be a great addition to, I guess, getting into your room and just other parts of the hotel or resort. Um, this also extends to more than just hotels and resorts. Um, it's also any technology that utilizes generating keys for the Apple wallet. Um, so I do have a latch lock on my door. I know that was one of the things that they were advertising that is able to utilize this. So maybe when iOS 15 fully comes out, I can try this feature for myself. Um, probably the biggest thing that they announced for Apple Wallet is the driver license. God bless. I've always wondered why I can't take a photo of my driver li driver's license front and back and just show it to like an officer or something. Anyway, now Apple Wallet, not Apple Wallet. Yes, now Apple Wallet can securely put your driver's license in your Apple Wallet. Yeah, I knew that sounded weird coming out at the very beginning. Anyway, that's just one less thing you have to carry around in your wallet but you should probably still carry around your driver's license just as backup. Um, the only situation I can think of of this being super convenient is just at TSA and just the airport in general, because now I don't have to take out my wallet at all. It's just my passport and my phone. That's it. I love it. Um, they also added the addition to have corporate badges be within Apple Wallet. I think that's pretty cool, but please let me work from home still. Um, now we go back to Craig. We get some updates to the weather app. So it's actually a more useful weather app. Um, has some cool animations now um, that better match how the area is represented. Um, I think it looks more pleasing to the eye. Um, the biggest thing for me is the radar that they added. Um, so even though like the weather sometimes says 60% chance of rain, I always look at the radar and see where the clouds are, what direction they're moving, and where they'll be from an hour from now. So super nice that they added a built-in function or radar function. Love it. Um, next up, we move on to Meg, the director of product design for Apple Maps. So we get a refresh of how Maps works and looks. So pretty much call this Apple World. That's how I want to call it now. Sounds like an amusement park that Apple would make and you would need to get an Apple car to get in. But anyway, it looks like the Game of Life game board with more colors, road, more, road mar bleh, more road markings. And as I expected, at least from the beta so far, the only, it's really only Southern California that has the road markings. So hopefully by the full release, it will be widespread across the entire nation. Um, I do feel bad talking about some of these Apple features because many of these features feel like it's just for the US or North America and like small parts of Europe and the rest of the world is left out. It's, I guess how the cookie crumbles should crumble to everyone. Anyway, um, I have my suspicions that this is probably gonna be utilized for their upcoming Apple car within the next decade because it looks too good just to be like a regular navigation system. So if maps can look like this in CarPlay, I mean, Google Maps, it might be a wrap for you. I think Meg did say that it's coming to CarPlay. And of course, we'll be bringing this driving experience to CarPlay later this year. Um, they also improved transit. Would have been great when I rode the city bus for seven years, but that's neither here or there. Um, so that pretty much wraps up iOS 15. I mean, there's new Safari, which is nice. Um, there's some AirPod stuff that also coincides with iOS 15, but I'll probably save all that stuff for later that I talked about in a separate video because this is already getting long enough. Um, so my overall thoughts about the event are, it's okay. 
you know, it's definitely not a downgrade. It's not like a super amazing upgrade. I think with iOS 14, that was a pretty big update in itself. This is more of just polish, polishing iOS 14. I think they focused a little bit too much time on FaceTime, including myself. Anyway, if you found this video informative, I appreciate every sub, like, and comment. And as always, guys, much love.